coronavirus is not a problem for India or China alone. It's a pandemic that the entire country is dealing with. And what happens across the world also impacts us. Let's try and understand how is the United States of India dealing with it, just how serious it is over there. I've got the health policy reporter of the Washington Post, Yasmin Abu Talib, joining us right now. Yasmin, thank you for joining us, uh, you know, with, with insights and updates on what's happening in U.S., uh, just what is the current situation? So the administration has started taking the threat of the virus much more seriously. Life in the U.S. has shut down quite a bit. A lot of schools are closed. A lot of businesses are closing. You know, restaurants and bars in some states, including New York, only doing delivery. Um, and, you know, people are, are encouraged to do this social distancing, not go out, not gather in large groups. So, you know, a lot of people are sort of mostly at home right now trying to mitigate the spread of the virus. Uh, you know, we are getting a lot of queries here in India about people who had plans to travel to United States in the coming weeks. Uh, what's the policy that uh, the Trump administration has in place for people flying from across the world? So the Trump administration has put quite a few travel restrictions in place. Um, even domestically, you know, there are fewer flights flying throughout the U.S. So uh, there's a travel ban with Europe right now, since that seems to be the, the new sort of epicenter of the outbreak. There have been travel restrictions in place with China for quite some time. There are travel advisories for several countries around the world that have had large outbreaks. Um, so in general, people are encouraged to not travel if they don't have to. Um, and then we saw a lot of chaos at the airports over the weekend with, you know, uh, an attempt to put new screening measures in place and, you know, actually creating some of the circumstances you're supposed to avoid with this virus. Um, is there a sense that perhaps the government there moved a little too slowly on, on the situation, Yasmin? Absolutely. Um, I think there, there have been, we reported and a number of others have reported that the administration was slow to take this really seriously, you know, restricted travel with China at the end of January. But then we had a lot of issues with tests and getting a lot of people tested and understanding just how widespread or not widespread it was, where there might have been outbreaks. We know there was a reluctance by the president and by lots of other people um, within his administration to take this very seriously in the early days. And now we're sort of seeing this big spike in cases. And now they're saying, you know, the, the worst of it is yet to come. The expectation is that things will still get much worse in the U.S. before they start to get better. Uh, he's also made announcements of taking special steps, you know, to uh, to to uh, speed up the process for developing a vaccine and to hold vaccine trials. How is the uh, medical industry really looking at these d decisions? So I think it's pretty clear a vaccine is at least a year, if not a year and a half away from being widely av available. There is a vaccine that's about to go into early testing or, or perhaps already in early testing, but that's only the first phase of testing. So there is still a long, long way before a vaccine is widely available, you know, where people, where anyone can sort of have access to it. That's at least a year away. So in the meantime, you know, we're dealing with an outbreak that has no vaccine no sort of proven um, drugs or therapeutics to treat it. So it's, it's a lot of uncertainty um, and, and the vaccine is, is quite some time away. Right. Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Yasmin, here in India, there's a lot of, you know, confusion and questions being raised of who should be getting tested and, you know, uh, at what stage should you be getting tested? And if the government is actually doing that testing at a scale large enough, is that a question uh, that you all are also dealing with in the United States? It's been improving in the last couple of weeks, but certainly for, for several weeks from the end of January through February, the criteria for who got tested in the U.S. was very narrow. There was a lot of concern that you were missing a lot of cases. It was basically anyone who had recent travel to China or if you had come into contact with a confirmed case, but no one else. Um, even if you were showing symptoms, but you didn't you didn't meet one of those criteria, you didn't get tested. And now, of course, there's a lot of people saying we probably missed a lot of the cases because of those testing delays and the narrow criteria. It's expanding a bit now. There are more tests available and it's, it's getting better. But you know, one of the biggest criticisms of the U.S. government's response is how long it took to get testing up and running on a wide scale. Yasmin uh, Abu Talib, thank you so much for joining us there uh, from the Washington Post live with all of these updates. Uh, uh, the only, uh, uh, you know, intention here is to bring updates from across the world on how various nations are dealing with this situation.